I don't know about you, but I would absolutely do that. 100%. <laughs> if I could get away with it, yes, I would go out and torture Kai every time San Francisco shock loses. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'd post it online for the content. Yeah, I rip my shirt off holding a shock flag. Welcome back to the Hot Pot Podcast with Sen, Becky, and Bonnie. Um, last week, we did a fantasy draft session, the three of us, and it became very stab in the back with <sighs> Sen and myself really kind of trying to shaft Bonnie, and that was a joyous time. Uh, <laughs> but this week, we're going to do, we're going to cover a few topics, um, but mostly we want to talk about the matches of the last two weeks and how we feel about them. How we feel about the teams, too. How we feel about uh, the teams. Okay. Where, where, where are we at? The general a, confusing. Yeah, from a com- completely unbiased, uh, empirical standpoint. Completely what we analytical. Think about the teams. <laughs> We're, we're yeah, really talking as, you know, like GM level, you know, specialists here. Yeah, this is a this is a serious podcast. So it's a very serious podcast. Feelings are not allowed uh, <laughs> ever. So um, we have that as like the main topic of the episode. But before the episode begins, we have something else that has kind of risen, kind of sh- reared its weird and ugly head this week in the Overwatch League community. Sen, what is that? <laughs> I genuinely didn't realize it was like a serious thing until maybe yesterday because I thought it was a meme. Like claiming people are paid actors for being fans of more than one team. <laughs> like what kind of galaxy brain bullshit are you on? I saw someone who question. literally said like, there's no way these people are real fans. They're too comfortable in front of the camera. Like, not all gamers are like you, bro. Like, I get that you're an incel who never leaves the house, and you're some, like, grand (laughs) wizard-level weirdo that, I don't know, shies away from cameras because you turn into an eldritch being when captured on film or something. (laughs) But that is not the case for most people. Yeah, I mean, some people just, like, like to have fun, and you can like more than one team. It's not like when you choose one team, you're like, you swear a blood oath to be bound to them for all eternity or something. Conclusion, video game fans are oppressed. Gamers Systematically, rise up. gamers <laughs> rise up. With the glass ceiling broken, all oppressed groups shall prosper. Especially the most <laughs> oppressed group of all. Gamers. <laughs> okay, well... Um, as someone who actually was at the arena last week, I can guarantee that none of these people are paid actors. Um, although they should be, because to sit through all those games every day, every week, is, like, actually, like, a full-time job. Basically, that's how it feels. It is exhausting to watch at home, let alone at the arena. Yeah, that's why, like... Well, you have to line there. up at, like, what, 7 o'clock to get a front row seat? Oh, um, God. I think earlier, actually. No, actually, uh, the- it's about three to four hours before. Um, oh, okay. On the day that Dallas and Houston were playing, a lot of Dallas and Houston fans, um, I went to the arena um, at about 12, and the game started at 4 that day. So there were already... So many people lining up. I was like, Jesus Christ. Like, wow, people are very passionate about this. And none of them are paid, but they should be. Mm-hmm. Because it really is a chore to have to do that. Like, I couldn't even be in the arena for all four games. I had to step away and watch it elsewhere. Because it was, like, the energy. It's incredible, but it is also exhausting. Someone agree with me so we can move on to the next point. You're right. Thank you. All right. So (laughs) now that we're done with that part, (laughs) um, let's get into the main, the main topic of today's episode, which is uh, every team has played at least three times, I believe. No, Paris has only played twice. Every team has played at least twice in the past two weeks. And so we have like a kind of a general understanding of their skill level 
and how they stack up. Well, I each thought other. I did, and well, then yeah. other things happen. <laughs> okay, so not maybe not their skill level, but just just like their general vibe right now, like what what, yeah. what they're kind of doing right now. So, yeah. Um, we thought we would do a bit of a lightning round ish thing, kind of like we did before the season started, actually. Huh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That, that was totally planned. I didn't just realize that just now. Um, <laughs> where we all just go through and we talk, talk about, about the teams. Yeah, talk. Yeah. We get it. We take a team, uh, say briefly what we think about it, maybe discuss it a little bit, and then we move on to the next one. So it's not yes. too long because ugh, we would never want our podcast to my be mic long back. okay my mic is back oh my god it was dead <laughs> it was streaming oh my god uh, Sen. i said it was quiet Sen. <laughs> i thought you abandoned us Jeez. no i was i was desperately trying to yeah, like bonnie thought like we were being really mean <laughs> no i, no, I needed is, to when, move on when bonnie was talking i was agreeing with her and she was like someone please agree with me and i was like i am <laughs> <laughs> Why is no one hearing me? <laughs> I realized I was put in my jail. Trapped in Australian internet jail. Oh my god. I can't wait to get a proper computer so and maybe a new headset so this stuff's happening. Uh, I don't think the internet's gonna I don't think the internet's gonna improve once you get a better computer. <laughs> You're right. Oh it was fine at my boyfriend's house because he has like the national broadband network or whatever. I'm still stuck on like Web internet. That was a that was an interesting week. That was the first time I'd ever heard your voice clearly. You sounded like a different person. <laughs> anyway, okay. Yeah, I was so, using a different headset. Yeah, I could I could tell because I could hear mm. your voice. Uh, okay, so <laughs> uh, let, let's let's begin. Okay, let's go. Uh, so we'll start with me, and I will be talking about the New York Excelsior. Mm. Uh. <laughs> Remember when people thought NYXL wasn't going to be as good this season? Well, uh, I think their performance so far has uh, more than dispelled those opinions. Um, honestly, uh, I'm talking about it like I thought they were going to be good, but I didn't. I, I was not confident in them at all. Uh, that's just part of being a fan, though. So I really, like, I'm very impressed at how they've adapted to the meta. Um, it... Like, I understand now why they have so many DPS players, because they've got, like, <laughs> Nene and Libero are so good at um, Zarya and Brig. And then they also have, like, Sebiobi and Flower in their back pocket if they ever, if DPS ever comes back. If DPS ever comes back. <laughs> if DPS is a thing ever again. If damage please heroes God, ever see the light of day again. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's... I'm very impressed by them. I think everyone's been very impressed by them, actually, because mm-hmm. of their choke last playoffs. But, yeah, I am looking forward to another good season and then to mm-hmm. being let down in playoffs again. Uh, but before that happens... We'll Always have a, a joy. We'll have a couple months of uh, wins, so that'll be fun. All right, uh, Becky, who's your first team? <laughs> So my first team is Soul Dynasty, and honestly, I'm just sort of like, I, we're still in that early season zone where we have a positive map differential, we have more wins and we have losses so far in this stage, and the, like, someone asked me about the game against Dallas, and I just said, I'm sorry, what game are you referring to? That game didn't happen, that game didn't exist, I don't know what you're talking about. Um yeah, I'm just waiting for the pain to, you know, become more routine. Um, because right now I feel I'm, I'm still sort of like in that zone where apparently I have hope, uh, which is dangerous. And um, I just no- need them to, you know, like, go back to being bad. Uh, like I got <laughs> used to last year. Uh, but actually, uh, I will say um, as unfortunate as uh, sort of unfortunate as it is, um, Clearly, other than Jay Hong, the original lineup is does not sort of meet the needs of this current meta. Um, and what I've come to think a lot is um, this meta requires the flex it requires so much from the flex tank. Mm. Um, it requires so much actual flexing from the flex tank onto Sombra, onto Reaper, onto whatever you know, like fun pick. Um, and like I, th- I think Sombra and Reaper are the two things we've seen the most of. I think Fury, Mecho, Michelle, RCK have all flexed onto that hero to good effect. And um, so I'm really grateful, first of all, that Michelle, we did get a flex tank who can do those things. And yeah. But having said that, um, 
it does seem like that thing that Soul does when one thing doesn't work out, it snowballs. That's still an issue for sure. Yeah, I Michelle's mm. been really impressive this season. I wondered why they were benching Zumba permanently, but unfortunately, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it does, and that's the saddest thing. He's so, so good. I miss you. <laughs> good night, Zumba, forever. That's so true. <laughs> Listen, I'm just looking at the roster thinking, is Sabiel B ever going to be outside again? Um, I, I I saw him in the press room one day, so I know he's still alive. Um, <laughs> he's still <laughs> real. He's but, trapped in DPS jail. Yeah, he's trapped in DPS jail. <laughs> he I'm sure, I'm sure he I'm sure he could play um either yeah. Brig or Zarya very well if um if he tried, but I don't know. I think they're just I so mean, practiced it's, with... it's hard to go up against Nene, right? Yeah, and also they've yeah. just like practiced so much with Nene and Libero already. Yeah. So I don't think it makes much sense to try to switch up your DPS rotation anyway at this point. Yeah. 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 Uh, so Sen, your first team? Uh, well, obviously I've got San Francisco Shock. I have a lot of opinions because I think we're doing well. I think this team is doing okay, despite the fact that we're two one at the moment. I think if anyone mm. goes back and actually watches those VODs, you'll find that Shock are doing... It's, it's not that they're playing bad. It's just that they Titans were really, really, really good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't make yeah. it easy for the Titans at all. Yeah, mm. exactly. And also, same with like Gladiators. We did okay. We did well. and It was it was really back and forth as well. But, uh, yeah, it was. Mm. I, th- I think there's... I don't know, right? like because the way you, when you when you see when you watch Shock, right? We only put Smurf out for control maps, and then mm-hmm. Super's our main tank for the rest of the matches. And then Joey Hope and Nevix get switched in as needed. And Striker and Rascal are typically only out on control as well. Mm. And I don't know. I think one of our issues is that there's some like how do I? Hmm, I think. We, especially against in the game against Titans, it's just that their tank line is so, so good. Which is to be expected mm-hmm. considering how long they've been playing with each other and mm-hmm. just like it, that pre established synergy. And I just feel like the tank line is just, it's, it, it, it outclasses us, which makes me sad to say, because I think our tanks are good. I think Tohyobin and Nevix are incredible, and I think Super and Smurf are good as well. Despite mm-hmm. the fact that everyone thought that Super was going to be riding the bench, he went mm-hmm. beast mode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially in well, London also, today, yeah. like when um, in overtime when uh, not London, what's it called? On Kings Row today in overtime when it looked like Shock were really going to lose right after the first point, the, mm-hmm. the, the Super like got that shatter off and then just killed two people and went beast mode, and they managed to push it. Yeah. I mean, as a, as a Titans fan, I was sweating the entire time. So Shock played a very good game today. Today was well, very also, I think me. I feel like we can't underestimate the fact that Titans have two tanks. That's it. They have Janu and they have Bumper. Yeah. And that doesn't change. That's a fixed value in that equation. Yeah. Um, whereas I think I have question marks about the teams that do switch out tanks, like how effect- effective that is. I, so I think for some teams it works very well, but mm. I think sometimes I, I see Hangzhou um, switch between No Smite and Gu Shui and I'm like... I don't know, man. Yeah. Uh, actually, NYXL also only has two tanks now that I think about it. So, mm-hmm. interesting decision from the two top teams. Uh, we might see well, if, I guess, like, if you that pays off later. If you have more tanks, then you have less overall scrim time with, like, that one particular, like, you know, the one tank configuration. Yeah. And so, yeah. if you're only scrimming with, that, with those two tanks, then you're getting, like, the maximum amount of practice uh, you could possibly get. Actually... Uh, I did talk to Super about it uh, when I was at Overwatch League, when mm-hmm. I was interviewing him for my main tank piece, mm-hmm. and he, I, I did ask him about what what it's like to have to share tank duties, ah. and he said the biggest thing is that it helps out a lot with, like, burnout, oh, uh, because yeah, that makes he sense. does yeah. get to take, he doesn't have to scrim everything for, like, six hours a day, he gets to take yeah. breaks, and he also, when he's spectating... Um, it's not limited to teams, so he gets to spectate the other team's main tank as well and see what they're doing and oh. learn from them as well. That's so, handy. Yeah, he, that was what he said was the best thing about having two main tanks on the team. 
And That's a very good insight. Thank you, yep, Bonnie. Conversely, for I also asked Mono about now being the only t- tank on his team. And ah. he also said that he seems to have learned, he's, he claims to have learned a lot more as well from being the only tank on his team. Maybe they learned more, both of them have learned more, but in different ways. And he also mm-hmm. mentioned that he's kind of worried because if he gets sick or he can't play for some reason, mm-hmm. then yeah. they don't have a backup. So they'll yeah. just be like fucked for a match or something. But yeah, that's just the intricacies of tank players on your team. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. So um, conveniently, since SF Shock just played against Vancouver, the next team that <laughs> I wanted to hit was Vancouver. And... Okay, well, <laughs> I distinctly remember putting them as mid table in the in before the season started because and I thought you were being way too cautious with that. I, oh, okay, listen, I, <laughs> I have been hurt before, and I like you've been in an abusive relationship. <laughs> I have been hurt before, and I know to be cautious now in the future. But I am extremely pleased, obviously, at how it's turned out. I. I'm very proud of uh, the boys and I think they are probably they're definitely the strongest expansion team because they already had that synergy they're not a new team by any means um Mm -hmm. and they have so much history behind them and also they have a huge fan base so like they have a lot of advantages in every aspect and Mm. it's really paying off and I'm very glad to see them uh pardon me uh not pull a soul dynasty with this one (laughs) um they That's okay. Um, I'm numb to pain now. I don't feel it anymore. Yeah, like it would it would be very very nice to see one of the original semi original Apex rosters actually make it far in Overwatch mm. League. Because even if you look at NYXL now, they're like unrecognizable. And oh. yeah. yeah, even London Spitfire, London Spitfire, Soul Dynasty, NYXL, the big Apex teams that came into um, mm-hmm. Overwatch League, they're all kind of like scattered to the winds now. But it's very nice mm-hmm. to see that Runaway slash Vancouver Titans is um, putting on a strong performance. So I feel like that's mm-hmm. a win for Apex. That's a win for Korean Overwatch. Hell yeah. Uh, also, Bumper and Janu are fucking nutty. Like, they are so good. <laughs> they mm-hmm. can't keep getting away with it. Oh, wait, I think I've got them on my <laughs> they draft. My, well, I've got Janu. Do I? Yeah, I've got on, on my. On the other one that we have, uh, Sen, the other one that we have, um, I've got Janu, Fury, and Rhea, oh, so that's yeah. a very strong Jesus tank line. Christ. Christ. <laughs> the other one doesn't exist because I was on a farm when the draft happens, and I just forcibly <laughs> assign people that oh I, I don't even know who they are. Okay, anyway, um, okay, we can move on. Becky, the second team. So uh, my second team is Gladiators, and I mean, I've... Like whatever beef is between Soul and Gladiators, and I'm like whatever about it. Like it was yeah. like just I mean just, just someone duct taped <laughs> Fisher's mouth. Um, but <laughs> I mean I don't even think he was being that like recently. I don't even think he's like said anything that incendiary except against that. Well, well moving on. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, wait. So Gladiators, I think, are looking really strong, and I think they have a resilience that really cannot be underestimated even though they did lose their latest game right and Mm. their like standings is not great but i actually because they beat shock which no one was expecting um and their game with soul was also not easy um so yeah in general like i rate them really high they're certainly doing better than the other la team and um (sighs) and i I think they, I think they have the strongest, uh, one of the strongest support lines in the entire league. I think Shaz and Big Goose are just like just spectate Big Goose. If you have all access, just stay on Big Goose's perspective the entire time. It is very entertaining, very thrilling. Mm-hmm. Don't try it at home. <laughs> okay, uh, Sen. All right, second so my, my second theme is oh, Jesus. Houston, and I have to confess, I haven't watched all of their matches just because I don't have time to. I try to focus on shock most, but um, I have watched a few of Houston's matches, and I remember when we did Power Rankings originally, I rated them as a bottom team, and everyone was very surprised because they were doing okay last season. But I think they are, Houston are kind of like a meta team, if that makes sense. Like, they did really well last season because Dunk mm-hmm. Rat was in the meta, and Jake was able to play that hero. And the meta is completely different from what it was, mm-hmm. and I just feel like the this meta hasn't been kind to them. 
Um, it's not even necessarily that no. they're bad players. It's just other players can, no. like other teams have just adapted better. I think I, get, I think yeah. that um, Houston, along with a lot of the uh, bottom-ish teams, have their biggest problem is the lack of off-tank mm. flexibility. Um, mm. Yeah, like they've got a uh, cool mat and spree. Cool mat pretty much only plays diva. Spree plays mm. diva and Zarya, but like you need more than that in this meta. Like to be able to mm -hmm. um, run anti goats if your goats isn't as good as the other team is super important. Mm. Yeah. I I like. I it feels a little bit like the beginning, the beginning of the Mercy meta when all these Lucio one tricks who have only ever been playing Lucio were suddenly like, oh shit, do we have to like actually <laughs> learn how to play Mercy? Oh, you can say Toby, it's okay. <laughs> no, it wasn't just Toby though. Like, like the... <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, a lot mm. of them were like that. I also yeah. think. A, I feel I'm like they're really for... kind of like underutilizing Dante Sombra from. The matches I've watched, I just feel like there's mm, mm. bigger potential there, but also there is that trend of sort of you know off tank flex flexing the Sombra instead of like the DPS. So like on Shock, yeah. you've got been playing Sombra instead, and yeah. I'm I'm wondering how much that affects it. I I think it does because um I think someone said on the cast today with the one of the games I don't even remember which um. I think it was Hangzhou mm -hmm. versus London, where Rhea. So I I don't think Rhea can play, or at least that's what what I what I assume, um, because Rhea wasn't flexing onto DPS player DPS uh, heroes. Godspeed, their DPS came off Zarya to play DPS heroes, um, mm. and Rhea went on Zarya because the Rhine Zarya is really the core. But then Godspeed can't go back to Diva, mm. so they're stuck with this. Whereas if you have a flex tank who can who can flex onto dps heroes um you can sw switch back and forth you can have a reaper but then that can switch back to uh, a diva and you can still have the regular goats yeah uh yes so a lot of the bottom teams have that kind of in common um yeah. but the next team that i want to talk about is not a bottom <laughs> team anymore baby london spitfire we made the bottom, it bottom team. two two ninth place in the league <laughs> Solidly in the middle. Hell yeah. Yes! That's honestly so much better than I expected after last week. But yeah, uh, London has, has had a rough, rough first week. Very rough first Oops. week. I think maybe just not competing for a long time, not being good at the meta, the pressure of being defending champions, all of this kind of added up to give them a very weak showing last week. But uh, they pulled it back this week uh, after a truly horrible game against Justice, where neither team won, basically. Both teams lost, <laughs> spiritually. Um, spiritually. Yeah. Um, despite the scoreline, uh, we actually had our first game ever where neither team won. Um, and then they beat Spark today, mm. which is... <laughs> nobody Impressive. expected that. Literally yeah. no one expected that. Uh, I certainly didn't. But I am... Uh, very impressed by kind of their ability to come back because there was a lot of backlash and a lot of like memeing about them after last week. Yes. So being able to kind of reset and have a and go two zero this week, very impressive to me. Also, I can't not mention Fury, um, uh, my boy. Uh, he is so <laughs> good at Overwatch. Uh, he's crazy good at Overwatch. Um, he deserves to be recognized more. <laughs> and he deserves player of the match. Like, how is it that in his entire Overwatch League career, Fury's only got play of the, player of the match three times, and one of those times was during playoffs? <laughs> okay. Okay. I almost well, I almost went on a thing there, but So I'm I think back. this is a perpetual D.Va um, problem, actually, because I mean, not that Fury is just playing D.Va, but mm -hmm. D.Va, a lot of what D.Va has to do is kind of invisible. Yeah, that's what I was... Um, I tweeted about this earlier today, but I feel like Fury is one of those players that, like, is really hard to spectate yeah. because he, or, like, pay attention to, unless you're literally on his perspective 24-7, <laughs> uh, which I am. Yeah. Um, he, because what he does is, like, he makes all these, all these micro decisions and, like, split-second mm -hmm. choices that are all correct somehow, and that's not the kind of thing that can be captured in, like, a quick switch to his perspective for, like, 20 seconds. It's, like, because... London is not very good at tank combos. 
Fury does not get, you know, the flashy 4Ks that players like Janu and Rhea get. But he does kind of do everything that a D.Va player is supposed to do. Yep. And it's very hard to take notice of that. So I'm, I kind of I I understand like, it, but like... That's I kind of like part of why it's so important as well. It's just this consistent sort of macro play and his game knowledge. And the fact that he's just always doing what he needs to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've like Fury. Um, he, I'm pretty sure he's had like one or two bad games, but it feels like he is so consistently good that he. I genuinely do think he's the most important part of London Spitfire. Like everyone on that team is super talented and super important, like in, integral to the success of the team. But I think he is probably like the linchpin. Like losing him would affect the team more than any other player. So um, my London uh, talk <laughs> spiraled into fury discussion as usual. Uh, so we could just we could we could just move on. <laughs> well, just to add to that, uh, I remember after the World Cup happened, um, Fisher did a review stream, on, and he was on Fury's perspective a lot. And at one point, he, Fury did that thing where he just sort of like like snapped for a second to the left and then back right. But what he had done in that split second was yeah. eat a dragon strike. Oh yeah, God. Um, which I from the Chinese who was the Chinese player who did the dragon strike? I don't know, Who's probably leave. Star? Yeah, probably leave. And Fisher just like he caught it, he saw it, um, but it was really fast, and he, it was just like boom, and um, and Fisher just started laughing and going, <laughs> "Dude, you're gonna make the Hanzo cry." Yeah, it is. Fury's like brain just works at a, at speeds that I cannot understand. His brain <laughs> is going one million miles an hour. Anyway, uh, <laughs> okay, we, we can't get caught up on this. Um, I can't get caught up in this because it would, um, I could easily need, talk about this. You want to time a uh, correction? Fury talk. Uh, uh, I, yeah, That's true. We, we need to actually continue doing that Fury talk timer. <laughs> but yes, okay, Becky, your next team. <laughs> My next team is Fusion, which I, I mean, like after Soul and Gladiators, I was like, do I care about teams? Um, and, uh, <laughs> I mean, so. Uh, what what is there to say about fusion? I I'm I have a lot of question marks. I have a question mark about like was Boombox really this integral to the to the degree that fusion apparently is like just sort of collapsing like a flan in a cupboard without <laughs> Boombox? Um, is this is this for real? Uh, but then again, you know, if you're a well-oiled machine in the way that fusion is, uh, the removal of one very talented Zenyatta, yeah, can have that much of an impact. Um, and of course, it has to be mentioned that Elk stepped in, like, literally at, like, day's notice mm. um, onto an off roll. Um, so, yeah, I have a lot of, like, question marks as to, like, how much of that is playing into Fusion's, um, fusions issues. Um, but, but um, but um, what else? Yeah, that's about it. Um, I think if, the, if, if I can comment, like, just more in general about the meta, uh, the the thing I fear most in the entire fucking world is gestures Winston, and the fact that last week, um, this week was better, but the fact that last week he was so lost, and he got melted so often on Winston, mm. was to me indicative of how much main tanks are reliant on other positions to keep them alive, and how much, like they are really not in control of their own health bar. Mm. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's about it. I also think Carpe is having a bit of a hard time in this meta. Like, obviously he's good, but he is not a Zarya player, and it shows. Like, <laughs> I like at the end of the Dallas Fuel match that they lost, um, Carpe came out on Widow to stall, and then he immediately got three kills. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I don't remember that. He like he switched off he switched off Zarya because like they were about to lose, and he grappled up, and he instantly got three kills. Like one of them was like close range as well, so. Yeah. And then he had to go back and switch back to Zarya, and I think like the it went to his face cam, and he like okay, yawned. <laughs> oh my god! Wait, uh, can I just do a quick shout out? Thibble Dork, uh, aka Brandon Padilla, has an article out about trash talk with uh, the Houston players uh, and Flame, and in it, um, Flame says, "I don't want to say that Carpe has literally won games by itself himself, but he literally has won games by himself." Oh, he really has. He Carpe is. <laughs> The fusion's X factor, and the fact that he's on an off roll right now is 
I think is also one of the factors hurting them other than the boombox thing. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think people like rated them really highly after they beat London in week one, but like I said, literally anyone could have beaten London in week one. They looked Ouch. awful. <laughs> I'm saying this uh, as London there. fans. I'm allowed to say that. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just Ouch. curious like how, what, like, what happened. Like between week one and week two, something happened. Uh, I don't know. I guess it was their head coach's incredible prowess. I don't know. Because he's so I mean, smart and experienced. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. Uh, Sen, you can go ahead. All right. Okay. My next team is Hangzhou, which I think a lot of people rated them as like not very high, right? Middling. Very high. There are a lot like, of middling ratings middling. for that one. Yeah. I think um in the off season, people thought they were really like middle, but like right before when people started getting scrim info a lot of people started rating them super high actually i also think like i don't know i just feel like hanjo kind of you know what maybe even we rated them as middling because we didn't want to have hurt but (laughs) (laughs) but i think like that's a little surprising considering kind of what teams this team is made up of Mm, right so it's like a mix between seven and x6 and Especially X6, these are good teams. These are teams that like have like kind of established synergy, and so it's not surprising to me that they're doing okay, and that they're actually doing like kind of well, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think people hyped them a lot, way too much in the off season, and now people are like surprised because like they have so much potential. They showed that in week one, but yeah, I don't know. They something happened to them this week. I'm sure they'll be better next week. Though. Yeah, yeah. This week was a rough week. Um, I mean, I, I think like. Ria's lack of uh, flexibility so far that we've seen might be hurting them because mm. um, he mm-hmm. is their diva player and um, we haven't, I don't think we've seen him um, so far switch off to like anything other than Zarya. So yeah, we'll see. Yeah, but the thing is, when he plays diva, he is really good at diva. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I, um, for Hangzhou, I think probably also not having Crystal, I'm not sure how much that's affected them, but. Um, mm-hmm. way like in the middle of the off season, I think they mentioned that they wanted Crystal as their starting player, and ah. he's uh, not around. So, uh, yeah, they they're kind of having to work around that with Adora and Bazi, but right. or Bezzy is it? I forgot Be-gy. what it was. Bezzy. Bezzy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I also wonder how much. Uh, you you started okay. You started calling pronouncing no smite like Yosemite, and so now I haven't been able to Yosemite? stop calling him no Yosemite. Yosemite. <laughs> I kept doing that that I day. I've been able to I'm stop. Gonna drilled into everyone's heads. No Semite. No Semite. No Semite. We are ruined now. <laughs> you ruined me. Good. So uh, okay, no Semite, and <laughs> I wonder how much like the fact that no smite and Gushu have to switch in and out, how much that affects mm. it, especially since Gushu. Doesn't speak Chinese, Korean, yeah. Speaks, yeah, does not speak Korean. I think Guxia is obviously one of the, probably one of the best Winstons in the league right now, honestly. But yes. the thing is, how much utility does Winston have nowadays? Especially when with communication issues, I I do have yeah. Yeah, I I can't stop calling him Nosemity. Nosemity. That's just who he is in my mind. That. <laughs> All right, next team. Okay, Bonnie. Toronto, um, which is uh, where I live now. And coincidentally, I went to the Toronto versus Valiant watch party tonight, and it nice. was a lot of fun. M- mainly because, great. yeah, I it was I'd never been to a watch party, so this was like my first time going to a watch party, and it was super fun. Mostly because no one expected Toronto to win. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was super excited that, like, we were all after map one, we were just excited that they were. Literally, like they were able to compete with Valiant, like e- yeah. they were even remotely on the same level, and yeah. then they actually went and won the series. The goddamn yeah. Madmans, it was, <laughs> it was insane, and yeah, everyone was super excited about it. Um, and I think, like, first of all, I think the local Toronto fan base is quite impressive. Like a lot of people here are very passionate about Overwatch and the local team, but also. I think it's very impressive that Toronto Defiant has been able to do this without their flex support. Um, they have two main supports right now, kind of like Philly, but not the same as Philly because they've obviously been... Um, they had a lo- way longer notice that Neko was going to be suspended, so they've obviously been scrimming with aid and stuff uh, for a longer time. But yeah, like a uh, big shout out to aid for 
stepping into that off role and bringing Toronto to like two one, I think it is now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're actually positive. They're doing quite yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah, and uh, I kind of like uh, you said the other day. I kind of like their scrappy. Uh, we're all made up of parts from different teams vibe that they have going on. <laughs> like, like yeah, like other than O2 Ardient, maybe all of them are from completely different teams. So, yep. and they're still managing to do well. So I like that. And yeah, I'm quite impressed with Toronto. Uh, yeah, people were really underestimating them before the season began. I think because their players weren't really from super successful teams before. But as we've seen with uh, teams such as MVP Space... Uh, individual talent can live <laughs> in unsuccessful rosters. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, speaking of which, Becky, what is your next team? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so my next team is Florida. Um, and they did that thing where they beat Fusion and made it, and it was like miraculous. But then it turned out Fusion was just crappy this week in general. Mm. So, um, <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about it now, but um, I will say I think Fusion uh, Florida this week looked so much better than last mm. week. And again, this was part of my question of what happened between week one and week two, because week one Florida was disjointed and lost and just generally not playing together at all. And then week two, I was watching them against Fusion and I'm like, they're moving as a unit? <laughs> huh? Yeah, it was like kind of crazy. Like I was like, what, 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 what kind of team bonding exercises did you guys do? <laughs> um, so I, I have a lot of hope, and I think that, well, it feels like they have more coaching um, input for sure because some of their comps um, against Fusion definitely felt pretty well thought out, or like they'd really sort of, you know, sat down and considered how to deal with Philly. So I, I still hold out, you know, some optimism for Florida going forward, even though they did lose their most recent game. The thing about Florida is that they're not a bad team on paper, right? I think it's kind of like, you know, well, like the MVP space I, thing. It's like these players aren't necessarily bad on paper. But no, for some reason no, they, they have, yeah. yeah. They have BQB, who is one of the most, like along with Guard, I think I would say like season one, it was BQB and Guard and Contenders Korea. Like those were the two songbirds to fear. Um, mm. But c- unfortunately, in this meta, I don't see a place for Saya player. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Like he, uh, yeah. he was their best player last season, but yeah, yeah. There's no reason for him to play right now. Yeah. Uh, we also have Chris, whom I'm very fond of. Chris. Uh, Chris is Chris is super I, good at Lucio. Chris. He's always he's so been good, right? he's always been very good at Lucio. Incredible and... shot calling. I love him. He's my son. Yeah, uh-huh. we are all love Chris, we our meta Athena Chris. boy. Okay, um, okay, let's uh, go to the next one for Sen. Oh. Okay, oh, I'm so excited about this. Like, okay, Shanghai. I think I I am still in shock that people really thought they were gonna go winless this season. Like, are you oh, guys yeah. are okay. Shanghai is gonna get more wins this season than those people have brain cells. <laughs> <laughs> I think. People probably, I don't know. I don't know if some people just don't keep up with like roster changes or what, or if they're just like, or if it's just like a meme. But I, I do know that some people were serious about it. I know that some people were very surprised that Shanghai was being rated highly, and I'm just like, I don't know where you've been, but you are wrong. (laughs) And I think that the okay, like they. It didn't necessarily live up to my expectations of first week, but that's completely understandable considering the fact that like Fearless just like yeah. is not here and then Gamsu got traded like a couple like you know, very, very recently. So the first two yeah. matches, I think their performance it wasn't even it, the thing is like they weren't bad, right? They weren't considering even playing what they poorly. Were going through, yeah, yeah, considering the fact that they did, did not have a proper main tank. And yeah. this week against Boston I think a lot of people have been arguing it's because fusions can't play, but also I do think the dragons have just hit their stride. I think they're meshing well. I think yeah. they're playing together. I mean, Austin was playing like Shanghai didn't have a Sombra, which is very surprising considering like how hard they were getting owned by Ding Sombra. 
for sure. Yeah. I yeah, Ding's Sombra completely carried that. I don't think Fusions would have had a much better time against him, honestly. Yeah. He was just running rampant. And I remember Boston did say that the thing that they were most afraid of um, from Houston when they played Houston was that Houston might run Sombra comps because they weren't really yes. good against Sombra mm. comps. It is a le- yeah. legitimate weakness of that team. Yeah, so Shanghai like pretty much just outplayed them. Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was just better than them. Smart. Except on the last map. Actually, on the last map, I was very impressed with Blase, but we'll get to that I later. I was very, very impressed with Boston the last map. I, I, I legitimately thought it was a 4-0 incoming. And it's mm-hmm. such a tough situation when you're down 3-0. Yeah. Like, I think any team that comes back to at least grab a map win. Especially in, in that game, 3-0. When yeah. you're the first team to lose to Shanghai. And no one is rooting for you. Everyone's screaming yeah, in every, the Even and... the Boston fans are rooting <laughs> for Shanghai. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah. okay, to move on to uh, the next Chinese team, Oof, Chengdu. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love Chengdu. I have thoughts about uh, this one. You can chime in as well. They are so much fun to watch. I know. Even when they got 4 0 by Seoul, it was the most fun 4 0 I've ever yes. seen in my life. Welcome like, to Chinese you could Overwatch. Tell, you could tell Seoul was so pissed about Among running wild in their oh, backline okay, that they were like bad. solo shattering him, solo <laughs> grabbing him. Literally, everyone was just like kill the hamster mode. And I could hear Jay yeah. screaming. It was really funny because like Among is so good at hamster. I don't understand. He is so yeah. good at him. Like, no other tank in the entire league understands Hammond's movement mm. or just, like, the general the chaining grapple. of his abilities. Yes, the grapple especially, but also, like, the general, like, chaining of his abilities. And, like, H- Hammond's, like, a part of him now. He, like... He is Hammond. The, the cooldowns, like, beat He's in already his, Hammond. Are, the cooldowns are in sync with his heartbeat or something. He, like... <laughs> <laughs> he plays like he has those minds on cooldown. Exactly. Yeah. It's crazy. And yeah, I obviously it's like the Among show because he is so fucking good <laughs> at Hammond. But also the other players have really been showing up. I've been very impressed with Elsa particularly. Mm. I thought Late Young was going to be the better off tank, but Elsa's been oh, extremely good. That. Yeah. Like Late Young obviously is a god of Zarya, but um obviously Chengdu doesn't play goats that much. So he doesn't come in very often. Elsa is incredible, actually. Like, people... I'm not sure people were talking about him that much. But, like, other than people who watched content- Chinese contenders um, before Overwatch League, maybe. But he is really, really good at playing D.Va and Sombra in the Chengdu lineup. And I think a lot of that is has to do with uh, Mr. Coach Rui. Zhui. Uh, Zhui. 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 Uh, he is really living up to the the expectations because people called nice. him like the smartest, like he is one of the smartest coaches yeah. uh, in Overwatch probably. And he is absolutely living up to that reputation. He manages to devise these comps and everything that actually people don't know what to do against. <laughs> I mean, right. other than Soul, mm-hmm. uh, solo grabbing among every <laughs> chance they get. <laughs> like literally the second it he worked. drops, the second he pile drives, they're like, okay, Fleta, quick, grab him. We don't, we don't want to deal with him anymore. <laughs> Get him out of the way. Get him out of the way. I don't want to look at this guy anymore. But yeah, it's... Yes, Chengdu. I've been very pleasantly surprised by Chengdu. They're currently 7th in the standings right now, (laughs) which is significantly better than 20th. So yeah, very impressed with Chengdu. Obviously obligatory. I love Yveltal uh, as well. He's a (laughs) real-life panda, and he is super good at Lucio as well. Uh, I think... Everyone should watch Eveltal and Elsa's perspectives when given the chance. I know everyone loves to watch Among's. I also love to watch Among's. But Eveltal's a very fun Lucio, and he's very cute also. So While we're still uh, on this topic, I just want to yeah? say, it's not Amen, it's not Amen, it's not Amon, <laughs> it's Among. 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 Yeah, Among. I don't think it's that hard. Like, pretend that it's like A-H-M-U-N-G. Among, right? That's yeah. not that bad. But... For some no. reason, people are saying Amon, and it, I don't understand. Amon. There is a G right there at the end of his name. <laughs> G right there. It's because they're getting confused with Hammond. Uh, Amond. <laughs> Amond. <laughs> Amond. A- Amond. 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 I guess if you put on like, a super Australian accent, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, moving on because we've gone. Ooh, very long now. Oh, okay, yeah, Becky. Really long. <laughs> next, 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 next team, Becky. 
It's okay, I'm already sleeping on the couch. Um, <laughs> uh, so the next team is Dallas. I don't know how I ended up with Dallas. Um, Possibly sign Dallas. Dallas. Dallas is my favorite ass team. Um, no, so I think Dallas, I literally just cannot get a read on. Like, mm-hmm. some days they look very... RCK has, for me personally, been the discovery of the season so far. I think he plays both Diva and Sombra at a very, very high level. Um, and at times, I feel like without him, just it wouldn't have worked. Um, like, none of the other players sometimes step up to the plate in the way that RCK um, has done like a number of times so far. Um, having said that, the like Dallas is just like all or nothing. When they f- crumple, they crumple hard. Mm. But when they show up, they really show up. And I'm like, who are you? It's like some Jekyll and Hyde shit going on. Fifty-fifty <laughs> hard, um, of course. Nothing so, to see here. Yeah. So I'm I'm trying to figure out like, are they still? I'm actually what I am wondering is if they're using all their resources in any given week to just prepare for one team rather than maybe two. Um, because that is something that teams have to decide on like which one are we going to you know actually prepare for yeah. so that would be one one guess i have yeah that makes perfect sense um yes i think dallas is very polarizing i don't think anyone can really place them right now <laughs> but okay to move on from dallas all right uh, uh so technically my next name is washington but i will admit i haven't watched any washington games because they always play when I'm asleep. <laughs> uh, I've watched like Washington bits and pieces, but not a full game. Yeah. Yeah, they're an interesting um, team for sure. I, yeah. I, I mean, I don't think I rated them very highly, and they haven't really done anything to change my view of them ever right. yet. I think they're, they actually, I initially grouped them, I think they were initially rated um, close to Defiant at the beginning of the season because they have the same shtick of, you know, um, players from a number of different teams, both from uh, um, Overwatch League and Contenders, um, brought together like multinational, uh, actually, Defiant is multinational, never mind. <laughs> um, but uh, unlike Defiant, Justice, yeah, d- probably does have a, a language barrier and. Yeah, like, um, they also have not had the easiest matchup so far. Mm. Yeah. They're, uh, they're like, um, opponents. Wasn't their first opponent, like, New York? York? Yes, it was. So that's tough. Like, if they're, like, and I think, I do wonder a lot about how these first few games in a season, um, can or cannot shape the rest of it. Um. But yeah, I'm. I'm. I feel like Washington is definitely a wait and see. Um, they, they were reversed up by London earlier this week, which was unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and was that their one game this week? I think it was. Yeah, they only played. Yeah. They've only played two games so mm-hmm. far. So. Yeah. So yeah, it's just like too early to say, and like especially if your first two games were New York and London, like I don't know what to say right mm. now. Yeah. Okay, so my next team, Atlanta Rain, uh, a team that I have accidentally begun to enjoy. Uh, <laughs> They're very enjoyable. It's, it's, it's very they, reasonable yeah, because to enjoy them. I was very resistant to liking them, but then uh, their players are uh, simply delightful and <laughs> very sweet players. And yeah, uh, they're kind of a fun team to watch. Uh, yeah, I think they... People did rate them pretty highly. Uh, people thought they would be one of the better expansion teams, and I think they're really delivering on that front. For sure. Uh, they have a lot of individual talent, and um, for being an international roster, I think their cohesion is very impressive mm. as well. Yes. Uh, especially considering they have like a Korean tank line, yeah. uh, which you'd imagine would be hard to coordinate with. But yes, Daco and Pokpo, uh, very big fans of those two. They are very good at what they do. Daco especially. Yes. Daco is um, another one of the godly main, t- uh, godly off tanks that have been discovered this season. And yeah, I don't really have that much to say about Atlanta. I think they're quite good. I think it is to be expected that they're quite good because um, all the players' sort of mechanics have always been very up there. 
so yeah, I'm excited to see how they develop in future weeks as well. Yeah, um, I also want to like mention Masa, the Lucio. Oh god, yeah, he's so team. good. <laughs> so nutty. I'm really enjoying his perspective. I would and... hate to be playing against him, honestly. <laughs> and um, with regard to Daco, I think he was kind of this open secret in Contenders Korea for like two to three seasons, uh, like consistently yeah. ranked the best diva in the in Korean contenders um but and I don't know I still have a little bit of sadness looking at Atlanta just because it reminds me that Element Mystic got kind of separated like, yeah just, I mean uh I did expect Daco to be good but given the nature of the international roster I wasn't sure like if he would be as good as he was mm-hmm. or if like if anyone would be really as good as they were but yeah Atlanta has been pleasantly surprising I mean, they've just been delivering. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another expansion team you have next is Paris. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, they're really good so far. They've played two games, one of which was against the Gladiators that I felt was very close. Um, uh, I really like Cruz, and I think Cruz prop- maybe has one of the best understandings of the current meta. Um and he's just such a fracking good Lucio. I cannot deal with it. I heard it was hip, actually. There was um, their coach, Christopher, actually said that the reason why Team UK was so good in the World Cup was because uh, hip consulted for them and taught them a lot oh. about goats. So yeah, they just got a very st- they've got a strong support line. Yeah, and they they took um, Coach uh, Baymon from uh, D- Damon. Damon. <laughs> Damon. <laughs> Uh, he was with the Valiant oh, last season. I miss season. you, Damon. <laughs> so yeah, they have a. Re- I mean, they have so much talent. They have Soon. They have Ben Best. Um, I I I I just remember the Korean casters like seeing Hip for the first time playing and like just getting kill after kill and YBT being like, "Who is this? What is happening? <laughs> Why have I never heard of this Inyana mm-hmm. before?" Um, so yeah, like uh, doing well. We'll see how. The, for, uh, the future week. Wait, who have they won against so far? They've won against. You the did Gladiator. say that you you did say that you thought they were relatively untested so far. Well, because they played, they're one of the other teams who've only played two games, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they beat um, shitty London, <laughs> oh. and they beat Gladiators very narrowly. So it'll okay. be interesting to see them come up against stronger competition. Mm-hmm. I think. Yes. But also, I think yes. it's better. I haven't watched any Paris games just because they're always on when I'm asleep. I'm not getting up at seven a.m. to watch Paris. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's because they have to be on for the or Europeans. <laughs> <laughs> Literally the opposite time zone. This is OCU discrimination. But that being said, I think this meta does really favor them because Europeans are really good at goats. Oh, they've it's- been playing tanks for a while now. I use, like Europe has always been the region of tank heavy comps, and it, this meta just kind of fell into their lap. So they have had a lot of experience in it. <laughs> I also think the schedule like favors them somewhat because they play only one game next week as well. Yeah. Hmm. Um, against Atlanta, which would be interesting. And then, I was looking at the schedule. I was thinking, why does Paris play so little? Yeah. I think they have two games in week four. That's the first time yeah. they have two games. But um, yeah, I do think that's an advantage for like if the, the fewer games you play early on that means you get to like watch a lot and like mm, yeah scout it out but okay um so that's paris well done good job uh next scene S- sen doesn't have anything left so <laughs> yeah, I, have, I have been watching yeah so okay i'll do mine a uh, valiant oh, oh valiant. Valiant. okay to be fair they have not made any of the games easy yeah, my poor yeah. green boys. I I have been a fan of um, LA Valiant since they were Immortals, and although they're barely yeah, recognizable funny. now, um, I <laughs> they're O three now. But I don't think that reflects how good they are at all. I feel like yeah. each of those matches, I mean, it just a little bit more, and they could have won them. Just a tiny bit more, and they would have won against uh, Spark, against NYXL. Two very strong competitors, by the way. Mm-hmm. Spark and NYXL, not easy teams at all. And Toronto actually really showed up tonight. I v- was very impressed by Toronto as well. So, yeah, I don't think LA Valiant's um, overall record right now really reflects um, the team's actual strength. 
But also, they have a tough, tough stage one ahead of them as well. So I would not be surprised if they lost the majority. Yeah, they play Vancouver. So I would not yeah. be surprised if they lost the majority of their, the last, the, the majority of their, the rest of their matches in it's stage just, one. It's just a tough ass stage one for them. Very tough stage yeah. one. I think when yeah, future stages will probably be easier for them. But this is probably the hardest time for them, both yeah. uh, in terms of score and also like mentally, I guess, for the team's morale. Yeah, but yes, I think are just so stacked. they have the fundamentals. They have like a good understanding of the meta. They just, just need to be a, like, like the tiny little push across the finish line and then they will be a real contender. Yeah. I also wouldn't be, I'm also curious if they like poured all their resources into preparing for New York XL and then mm. maybe underestimated Toronto. Yeah, um, I think everyone underestimated Toronto. So yeah, yeah. So, yeah we'll see. Um, but unfortunately, their next game is their next game is Vancouver. But then they're playing um, Guangzhou, and that's that'll be interesting because I think Guangzhou mm-hmm. is another like surprise team. They're everyone assumed they would have issues because they're they are so multinational. They oh, have I Chinese didn't. players and Korean players, and they have Kip. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I and love have Kip, Kip so hard. And Nero, oh, hello. Shoot. Oh, shoot. Wait, 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 How wait, wait. dare you forget is about Nero? Is he old enough to play it? No, he's not, but he's 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 there. Wait, yeah. one, one sec. I totally skipped over Boston. Yeah, you did skip uh, over Boston. So, <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can do Guangzhou we first. Guangzhou okay, first. Okay. No, we'll do Guangzhou first. I'll, I'll, I'll do Boston. Yes. I have no, no, no. no Stan, you, can you do Guangzhou, or like, do you want to do Boston? I, I, don't, I don't mind either. Okay, because I have feelings been about focusing Boston. Super hard. Okay, I also you, feel like we, that I mean, good. it's not like we've been strictly doing them, so you can yeah, just it's discuss not them. Strict and first, let's just let's just share them. Yeah. Uh, so, but so I mean, let's just Bonjour, finish up. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, like, plenty of talent. I, I, I'm very curious. Um, yeah, I'm very curious how their multilingual sort of like how that because did was Silk Thread part of Chengdu or Guangzhou? Yeah, Chengdu. No, it was part of Chengdu. Yeah. Okay, and he found like you know multilingual comms to be tricky, so um, that I, was one of the things yeah. he cited. And like Silk has, oh wait, no, Silk's not that great at Chinese because I thought he maybe like have like some sort of like understanding of Chinese, but from what I remember, he's not that great at it. But with Guangzhou, I would kill to be able to hear their comms. Yeah. <laughs> I, I rated Guangzhou pretty highly uh in preseason i didn't like say it because i didn't want to be wrong <laughs> but um first of all uh i drafted mr happy himself in my uh, fantasy league um sometimes uh boosters are good at uh getting points <laughs> but anyway so um uh I remember watching the show match against Soul Dynasty, and I know it's just a, sh- a show match, but I thought I was very, I was actually super impressed by oh, yeah. the Guangzhou players. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I thought they have a real potential to be like a contender uh, for maybe a playoff spot eventually. E- like a playoff spot, I think they, I think the game against Chengdu was a bit weird. Um, I don't think they, I don't think Chengdu, like, not to take anything away from Chengdu, they played super well, and that last, like, bait was definitely a masterclass in Zarya, but I think Guangzhou, once they tighten up their synergy, maybe, um, make their comms a little bit cleaner, I think they could be a very, very strong team. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay, so we can move on to, uh, Boston? Okay, Um, which we all have thoughts on. (laughs) I, I don't really. So you, you guys oh, just okay. take the reins on this one. I mean, all I have honestly written down for Boston on my notes is fusions in all caps. So Big good tad. Big fatty fusions. <laughs> don't say those things. <laughs> That's his proper title. Um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, God. Um, so I really hope the contract issue for fusions can be cleared up soon. Because um, I think he really has like stepped in to become the main like shot caller and soul of that team very quickly mm-hmm. in a very impressive way and so that's another like multilingual team but um i think him and aim god are sort of the two most impressive axes yeah i agree aim god's been very impressive this season 
yeah. uh, Fusions, who is as square in real life as he is on camera. <laughs> um, has also been like a kind of a, a beacon in this team, especially after they lost Gamsu. Mm. And yeah. Sen, what are your feelings on Boston Uprising? I just... Okay, these are like kind of like personal feelings because sort of after Boston kind of gutted their roster, right, it's hard to find someone to cheer for on that team except for maybe like, no. But now that Big Daddy Giga Chad Fusions is here... <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm so sorry. Stop calling that, please, God. That is his proper title, and that is how I will refer to him. Oh, God. Uh, I wouldn't care about Boston, but they've got Blase now. And yes. Blase is my technical technical Hong Kong representation. So Technically. I, yeah, I, I like Blase. I think he is a very good player as well. Because remember, in the last map against Shanghai, he stunned Ding out of EMP twice. Mm. Ding literally didn't get to EMP the entire round because Blase just stunned him out of it, which is super hard for a, for a Brig or anyone to do. I think they were relying so, on him a lot to stun Ding out of EMP for the previous yeah. matches. That, that's what it looked like, but then it just never happened, which is why Ding ran yeah. over them so he hard. Fi yeah, he finally, he finally leveled up and on like, Rialto. Also, I just remember, can we talk about Note 3 <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I don't want to talk about Note 3 <laughs> Finally, Finally, we have found a new unit of measurement to replace the AKM blade. God, the Reaper ugh, teams feel like it feels like everyone wants Reaper to work, but no one really knows how to make a Reaper work. Someone's someone's got to stick Janu on Reaper. Eventually, Janu's gonna go on Reaper, and then he's gonna show everyone. He's gonna I show everyone how an off tank should play Reaper. I felt like the classes were being incredibly generous about Nodes Reaper. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it, it was trying to rationalize it, right? Saying like, oh, it's more, it's, it's more about like, the threat that he poses rather than the damage he's actually dealing. But then, yeah. at the end of it, he wasn't really posing a threat nor dealing damage, so... Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, that is that is it. We went through all 20 teams. 20 teams is a lot of teams. It's way too many teams. teams. Um, okay, so, Sen, I know you haven't written your outro yet, but you need to do it. But yes, I will do it. Okay, alright. Okay, thanks for listening. Bye. <laughs> no! We gotta play our social media! Jeez! God, okay, alright, thanks for listening to Hot Pot with Sen, Bunny, and Becky. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed our rambling this week about how we're not paid actors, <laughs> and how we would absolutely torture cars if our favorite video team loses, if we really were given half the chance, and also ranking, re-ranking teams and discovering that maybe we were right. I think we were mostly right. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I think we were mostly right. I rated Houston very poorly, and look at that, I was right. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, you can find us at OWHotPot on Twitter and you can message us any suggestions if you have anything you want to hear us talk about. And you can follow Becky at Gatchaman or Gatchamchun. Gatchaman! <laughs> Gatchamchun on Twitter.com. Bunny is at BunnyQ. And I am at my newly minted Twitter account, Sen underscore ebooks. Um, thanks for joining us this week. Uh, see you next week, hopefully, if nothing else comes up for us to make this cancel for three weeks in a row. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.